Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss a pretty interesting topic, and that's on the uh, polynomial remainder theorem, and look at its proof. And uh, this is a special case of the Euclidean division, which I went over in my earlier video, so make sure to watch those in, my, in the link in the description below. So recall from my earlier video on Euclidean division for polynomials that for two univariant or single variable polynomials A and B, where B is not equal to zero, there, exi there exist two unique polynomials Q and R, and these are the quotient remainder, such that you have A equals to B times Q plus R, and then with the degree of R, or the highest power, of that polynomial is less than the degree of b. Or uh, for the case where r equals zero, I, I show that I defined it as the degree is less than zero. Just so the algorithm works in the case where the uh, degree, I mean, yeah, where the degree of b is equal to zero or it's a constant. So yeah, make sure to watch my early videos to get caught up on that. So now let's t uh, look at an application or special case of this theorem uh, to what is known as uh, polynomial remainder theorem over here. And here's on Wikipedia and here's what it says about it. So in algebra the polynomial remainder theorem or little Bayes-Zutz theorem is an application of Euclidean division of polynomials. It states that the remainder of the division of a polynomial f of x by a linear polynomial x minus a is equal to f of a. In other words, what it's saying is that if you're dividing f of x by x minus a, then the remainder is going to be equal to these. So these are equal. And then it also says, in particular, x minus a is, it, is called uh, yeah divisor of f of x if and only if f of a is equal to zero. And now let's look at the proof. And also, we have basically what I uh, when I was working through this out, I realized that the proof is basically the best explanation of uh, this theorem. And uh, as you'll see it over here, so proof of this. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically rewrite the Euclidean division, just so we have, uh, because it's using a, this is a constant there. So we're going to write this as um, f of x is equal to b q plus r. This is, all we do is replace the f of x there. So now what we have over here is, well, you're dividing f of x by x minus a. So what we're doing is f of x minus uh, yeah divided by x minus a. In other words, this is our new b function. So then we have b is equal to x minus a. So then what we end up having is f of x is equal to um, we're going to just put the x minus a over here times it by q plus r like that. In other words, now if we just look at f of a here, plug in a, this just cancels. That just goes to zero. So this just means we have, well, uh, r. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a minus a is zero. So then this just equals to r. And there's our proof. <laughs> Done. <laughs> this is very, very simple. But we can go even further, just to get some uh, more insight into this. Also note. Yeah, so that's how you can see it's a special case of the Euclidean division. And uh, to see the proof of the Euclidean division, again, make sure to watch my earlier videos. So also note what happens here is that, well, uh, yeah, b is equal to x minus, um, x minus a. And the degree of b, well, that's just x to the power of 1. So then the degree of b is equal to 1. That means that thus degree of r, the remainder, has to be less than the degree of b, which is equal to 1. So we need to have the degree of r is equal to 0. Or we just put in a bubble uh, over here. Or actually, let's leave the bubble out. Or r is equal to 0. So that we have, yeah, the degree of r equals 0 is less than 0. So or the remainder is just vanishes like that. So this is a very interesting case here. So now if the degree is 0, because both cases is a technically still zero. This was just for the algorithm. So what we have is r of x is equal to, well, let's just say it's constant c times x to the zero. x is zero is just one, because this is the highest power there. So the highest degree is zero there, uh, which equals to, well, c, which equals to constant. And if r is zero, c is just zero. So the remainder is always constant. And also what we have follows is, yes, yeah, basically now also, 
if uh, yeah if we have r equals to zero the remainder this means that the f of a is equal to zero and this is what uh, we have is you have as term basically x minus a is going to be called is a uh, divisor yeah, let's move it over here so x minus a is a divisor or factor usually what they're calling it of f of x and now to look at some uh, further into Wikipedia, has some applications here. So the polynomial remainder theorem may be used to evaluate f of x by calculating the remainder r. Uh, yes, that's interesting. As you could, um, yeah, basically you could simplify f of x there. Uh, and although pol polynomial long division is more difficult than evaluating the function itself, synthetic division is co is computationally easier. Thus, the function may be uh, more quote cheaply evaluated using synthetic division and the polynomial remainder theorem. So instead of just doing the long division one, you could do a combination of this kind of polynomial remainder theorem and some other sort of com computational synthetic division. And also the factor theorem, which, which I should cover in a later video, is another application of the remainder theorem. If the remainder is zero, then the linear uh, divisor is a factor. That's pretty much what I just uh, stated above. And uh, yeah, re repeated application of the factor theorem may be used to factorize the polynomial. And I'll go over this separately, but uh, pretty much the proof of that theorem is, is just over, uh, it's, it's already contained. Just make it equal to zero. Okay, so now let's look at an example just to uh, illustrate this method a bit more, just to make more sense of it. So if we look at an example, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my own polynomial just so we know what the answer should be. I'm going to go to with x minus 1 squared, which is the same thing as writing x minus 1 times x minus 1. And if you uh, using the FOIL method around here, x times x is, um, yeah, is x squared, and x times negative 1 is just going to be negative x, and then uh, negative, uh, yeah, negative 1 times x is also going to be negative x, so those add up to negative 2x, and then negative 1 times negative 1, they, one uh, the negative cancels, we get plus 1 over there. So this is what we get over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this polynomial that we know what the answer, or at least how it broken down should be, get a better box, which should be just x minus 1 times x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by some random uh, polynomial. So x, mi x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm going to divide this out by x minus 2. So then again, this is going to be our f of x on top. The bottom is our x minus a, which is the same thing as our f of x and our b right here. So now what I'm going to do is well, we can. Uh, what we should have is we should have the remainder r equals to a constant and has to equal to f of a, which equals to f of two. So plug in two. That's our a now. That's our a. Plug in the two inside the f of x over there. This is going to be equal to x squared, which is going to be uh, yeah two squared minus two times. Uh, 2 and then plus 1. So we have 2 squared is 4 minus this one. This is equals 4 minus 4 plus 1. Those cancel. This just equals to 1. Yeah, so I'll just put it over here actually. R equals to, yeah, 1 like this. So we should have R equals to 1. And in fact, we will do that. Just do long division over here. Just do basic one here. X, uh, put it over there like that. Put the X squared minus 2x plus 1 here. So we need uh, an, a number to multiply uh, by x to get x squared. That's just going to be x. x times x is going to be x squared. x times 2x is going to be 2x. And again, you can learn more by long division in my earlier videos. Put those in the link in the description below. So we subtract these. This is going to cancel out. And this is going to cancel. We just get 0. And then we carry the 1. So we get plus 1 here. And that's just the remainder. And there's the remainder. The remainder <laughs> equals r here. Same things as our check mark. And now what we could also do is I'll just write an example uh, two here, just to illustrate it. Uh, number two. What we end up having is if we had that same function x squared minus two x plus one divided by x minus one, because we know this part here. That's just going to be well. That was just x minus one times x minus one over x minus 1. So then these just, well, cancel. <clears throat> over here, this is just equals to x minus 1. And this is, yeah, what we have over there. And you could also see that the remainder here is 0. 
so plus zero over there. So r is equal to zero, and this should equal to f of uh, yeah, f of a, which is one. That's a now equals f of one. Plug that in. This equals to one squared minus two times one. Yeah, two times one plus one. <laughs> So this just equals to one, one squared plus one is two, minus two equals zero. So there is what we have over there. And also what we could do is if we write this in the uh, Euclidean division form just to show you, f of x equals to b q plus r. This is going to be, well, over here, x squared minus two x plus one equals to our b, which is our x minus one. And then our q over here plus r is zero. So that's zero. This one here is our q. That is just our answer above there. So we have x minus one, x minus one, which is equals to x minus one squared. And yeah, that's exactly how we started off at the beginning. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's uh, <laughs> it's all for today. If you followed along, and it's very interesting, you get the remainder just by plugging in this value inside. Again, based on the Euclidean division, I may go over a secondary uh, proof for it, a more uh, yeah, just different than the Euclidean division. But uh, yeah, I may do that, so stay tuned for that if I do. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all for today. If you follow along, it's very interesting, very simple theorem. I just want to go over the examples illustrated even further and go over some more properties of it. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, like always, get down with these exact notes in the link in the description below, as well as viewing these notes on Steam at an article format. And also, uh, make sure to check out my math forums and post any cool math or science-related stuff you find. Anyway, this is all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.